Welcome to Faith-Based Apologetics, where we grab Christianity by the book. So I'm going to be doing another reaction video, a reaction video to the lead singer of Hawk Nelson. So the first question I would like to come up with is, why would a Christian walk away from the faith? Well, this could be a number of things. Somebody could have a personal experience and they all of a sudden don't believe that there is a God anymore. Uh, it seems like people are walking away from the faith more and more, and it's just completely just puts me at ends as to why. So I'm going to show you a couple of clips of the reason why the singer, uh, the lead singer of Hawk Nelson decided to walk away from his faith. And then I'm going to give my commentary on that and then try to ex try to make sense as to why he walked away from the faith. I remember back to a time camping with my dad when I was like super young, when I was like maybe four or five. And, you know, I remember, I remember having like, you know, praying the prayer, uh, my dad leading me in the prayer. Something I would like to add to this is it, it takes way more than just praying a prayer to be a Christian. I want to say there's a movement in the Christian world of having not just a conversion uh, in the sense of like somebody prays a prayer, they walk away, they never come to church again, right? You want to have a discipleship culture, not just like a salvation driven culture because some churches fall into the problem. And I, and I know of a church, I'm not going to say, but I know of a church that I'll, I've talked to the pastor, pastor several times and there, he's like, well, I had you know, 50 people come to the Lord uh, this Sunday. And it's like, okay, well, how many people after they've gotten saved or claimed to come know Jesus, how many of those people have actually come back through your door again? The thing is, here's the difference with a discipleship-led culture is you're actually training somebody up in the Word. You're walking with them. You're not just saying, okay, you're good. See you later. We can't just be like, okay, I'm going to punch my card and it's a okay. I remember hearing other people that had these like crazy conversion stories and feeling like almost a little jealous. Like, oh, they have this like amazing story of all this horrible stuff that was happening in their life. And then they came to Jesus and their life got better. And like he hears other people's conversion stories and it's like they just take off, complete 180. They There's so much of a impact in their life compared to, you know, like he mentions things getting better. So he started to doubt his faith when he noticed his life wasn't getting better. Now here's the problem, okay? Big problem here. Jesus tells us that not everything's going to be peachy king in our, in our life. Not everything's going to be a bed of roses. John 16, 33, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So those are the words of Jesus. Is He simply, he literally says, this world will give you problems. Because of those problems, don't worry, I have overcome the world. Therefore, we don't have to sweat it. When I had questions, I sort of pushed them down. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to process that. Like, let's just stay the course. John states that he started to question his faith around 2009 or so. And then he says, well, wait a minute. I can't question my faith. I, I can't have questions here. And I have to, I have to just suppress those feelings, suppress those questions. That's horrible. Every time that you question your faith for whatever reason, you need to address those problems because eventually those questions you're going to have are going to grow more and more and more. It becomes a really big issue. So it can take something really small and make it really huge. I have a similar sentiment or a similar story or situation where I questioned my faith a few years ago. And what happened to me is I, Literally was walking down the stairs, fell down the stairs, and then after I fell down the stairs, I started to have very bad spinal issues. Because of that, I 
have to walk with a cane now. My life has been completely flipped upside down, bunch of medications, side effects from medication, so on and so forth. The point is of this is not to make anybody feel sorry for me, but the point is to say I was in that same situation to where I questioned my faith. I questioned why would God allow this to happen to me? Looking back on it, I now see the reason why that happened. I have a stronger faith in God now because of those things happening to me. I'm not angry at God because of him allowing the bad to happen. Again, going back to John 16, to where we have to uh, get the idea out of our head that once we accept Jesus, that everything's going to be a-okay, doesn't mean that that's going to happen. I, I do film work now. And so I was filming a documentary in uh, Uganda about this uh, this people group uh, that are indigenous to a like a forest area, and they've been displaced uh, by uh, these gorilla sanctuaries that have been created for for the silverback gorillas. Um, and so these people have been displaced, and they had nowhere to go. They had no skills. They had no jobs. They they had just been living off the land for generations. And then now they had no place to go. And there's hundreds and hundreds of children and children that are the same age as my, my children. And, and I know this is an age old sort of struggle. So John's talking about his work, what he does now and what basically brought about the questioning of his faith or like more or less the straw that broke the camel's back. He says that he's filming these people in Uganda and he noticed the suffering of these people. Now he says at the end, he says, well, you know, this is an age old question. My struggle is nothing new. Is what he's talking about there for those of you who don't know, is he's talking about the problem of evil. What is the problem of evil? Basically, it's something that atheists use. And the argument goes something along like this. Why would God allow bad things to happen to us? Why is it that bad things happen to us? Like what makes it okay? Now the thing here is after me watching many debates that I've seen is every time bring somebody brings up the problem of evil, I believe or feel that they fail to bring up the issue of sin. Sin happened in the Garden of Eden. If you look at Genesis, or decided to disobey God and eat of the fruit that God told them not to eat of. Now, the problem is, is that they elevated themselves to a higher status than God, thinking that they knew better than God, and when they clearly didn't, and also they desired to be like God, so on and so forth. You can go in there and check it out. But the thing is, is with the problem of evil, they don't address that issue of original sin. Now, I'm not a any kind of debate expert or anything like that, so I'm not even going to pretend to know how debates work and how the formatting works and so on and so forth. Maybe one day, who knows? That'd be kind of fun. I mean, the thought of my son being alone and naked and, and crying and in the forest and dying alone. That is a real experience for a lot of these children. John is stating that basically, all in a nutshell, how he's so brokenhearted over these people, especially when it comes to the children, since he has a child himself. And he's watching these children as he's documenting what's going on. Uh, he's watching them suffer, and they're dying at very young ages. And he's like, basically saying, God, why would you allow this to happen? First thing that I say, if God's place these people in your path and you have a heart for them why aren't you using your platform your name and raising awareness to this kind of thing happen why not start a foundation why not raise money or some sort of charitable organization to where you can help these people out the problem i have with him just walking away from the faith is that he says well, people are suffering and children are dying, therefore God doesn't exist. That's kind of a throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. Now, I don't have a problem with John at all. I hope that he finds what he's looking for. But the thing is, is you can't sit here and say, well, bad things happen, therefore God doesn't exist. 
our reality and our perspective doesn't change the facts of the world. Saying that is what I mean is, is if I look at something and say, if I look at an apple and an apple's red and I say, well, I believe that this apple is blue. In my reality, that app, red apple is blue. My reality does not change the fact that the apple is really red. So I will let you guys decide. Is it right of John to walk away from the faith? I don't want anybody judging him in the comments. I don't want anybody uh, just bad, you know, bad mouthing him because I don't believe that he's a bad person. I, I wholeheartedly believe that he's really actually going through a phase in the sense of a time, I should say. I believe that he's really going through a time in his life where he's questioning a lot of things. And the last thing that he probably needs is a bunch of people badgering him and yelling at him and saying how, you know, how bad of a person he is for doubting his faith. And like I said, I have no ill will towards John. I hope that he finds what he's looking for, and I hope he really does find a true connection and a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't like it. And also, leave your thoughts below in the comments, and let me know what you think. See you later.